complicating matters is the ever-changing Saudi line of succession. The current King Salman is the son of Abdulaziz ibn Saud, the founder of modern Saudi Arabia. For the last six decades, the crown had been handed off between Abdulaziz's sons, MBs will be Abdulaziz's first grandson to ascend to power, a long-delayed generational jump that was always bound to pack drama. It's true that MBs is a genuine reformer, but practical concerns have forced his hand as well. The Saudis have spent decades lavishing its citizens with welfare benefits to keep political dissent to an absolute minimum. That's no longer possible with oil prices hovering around the $60 mark. But MBs has a plan Vision 2030, penned with the help of management consultants from McKinsey and other firms. It's an ambitious overhaul of the world's 20th largest economy, and the diversification away from oil includes a 5% sale of Saudi Aramco, the Saudi state oil giant that's valued by Riyadh at $2 trillion. The hope was that the sale would raise $100 billion, but that's always been seen as overly optimistic estimate the figure is likely closer to $65 billion. Now even that is thrown into question with the arrest of State Minister and Aramco board member Ibrahim al -Asaf. Minister of Economy and Planning Adel bin Mohammed Fakhid was also taken into custody this weekend. In total, at least 38 past, current and deputy ministers have been detained in what's been framed as an anti-corruption drive, though it's still too early to tell if that's actually the case. If you're going to overhaul an entire economy, you may as well start with a clean slate. It's entirely possible that the ministers controlling key parts of the Saudi economy were arrested less because they posed a direct threat to MBs and more because they disagreed about the direction of economic reforms. There's no question that the arrests of Admiral Abdullah bin Sultan bin Mohammed al Sultan, commander of the kingdom's naval forces, and Prince Matab bin Abdullah, minister of the National Guard, were intended to ensure a monopoly of power for MBs. The Crown Prince has been Defence Minister of the Kingdom since 2015, and the National Guard was the last security force that remained outside his control. Matab was the one person inside the government who could have posed a serious challenge to MBs. That's no longer a worry. Taking on military leaders is the most traditional component of the Crown Prince's purge. But taking on the religious establishment is the most radical. The Saudi Kingdom has a rather complicated relationship with Wahhabism, a fundamentalist version of Islam. Briefly, the Al Saud tribe needed the followers of Muhammad ibn al Wahhab to help transform them from just another regional tribe on the Arabian Peninsula to the dominant force we know today, first to fight alongside them and then to help create and maintain a Saudi civil society. But the relationship has always been uneasy whereas Saudi rulers had wanted to engage with the world, Wahhabists shunned modernity as heretical. That became a particular problem once Saudi oil made the kingdom a magnet for foreign investors. For decades, it was an uneasy peace. That's about to change. It began with MBZ's announcement two months ago that the Saudi kingdom would begin issuing driver's licenses to females. He's gone further forbidding the Saudi religious police from arresting Saudi citizens, and he has begun to modernize the Saudi Council for Hadith rulings, which regulates the daily behaviors of devout Muslims. He was also sure to sweep up dozens of hardline clerics in this week's purge. Of course, a successful purge doesn't mean just removing those with formal powers. As with all political power plays, there's a crucial PR component involved. And if you're going to control the narrative, you have to control the ones telling that narrative, hence the arrests of Walid al-Ibrahim, chairman of the MBC Media Group. Relatedly, the former CEO of the Saudi telecom company, Saud al-Daish, was also detained over the weekend. If nothing else, the purge shows MBs has the ambition necessary to transform the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia into a modern, diversified 21st century economy. Now comes the hard part, executing on those ambitions.